Hello everyone. Welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dhiman Bhattacharya, Assistant Professor of Comparative Literature, Center for Comparative Literature, Bhasha Bhavan, Vishubharati. The author of this module is Dr. Shagota Bhattacharya. This course is on Canadian literature and this particular module deals with Margaret Lawrence's Manawaka novel, The Stone Angel. The learning objectives of this particular module are what do we understand by the Manawaka novels, the literary career of Margaret Lawrence, the thematics of survival in the Stone Angel, the theme of pride in Stone Angel and the literariness of this particular novel associated with the immediate history of Canadian fiction. The Stone Angel by Margaret Lawrence. Margaret Lawrence, 1926-1987. Jean Margaret Vemis was born in 1926 in the prairie town of Nipawa, Manitoba. She lost her parents at a very young age and was raised by her maternal grandfather. Margaret began writing professionally in 1943 when she got a summer job as a reporter for the town newspaper in 1943. She enrolled herself in the English Honours program at Winnipeg's United College. After graduating, she became a reporter for the Winnipeg Citizen. In 1947, she married Jacques Lawrence. In 1949, Margaret Lawrence moved to Somalia with her husband and lived in Africa till 1957. She wrote a number of short stories on African subjects and maintained a great interest in African literature. In 1957, Margaret Lawrence returned to Canada and settled in Vancouver. After separating from her husband in 1962, she moved with her two children to England. It was at Elm Cottage that Lawrence completed four of her five Manawaka books of them, the first being The Stone Angel, 1964. The great critical acclaim and commercial success of her novels, as well as her consistent output of essays and articles, solidly established Margaret Lawrence as one of the most important and beloved literary figures in Canada. In 1971, she was named a Companion of the Order of Canada. She received the Governor General's Award twice, first for A Jest of God, 1966, and again for The Diviners, 1974. Her book of essays, Heart of a Stranger, was published in 1976, and her memoir, Dance on the Earth, was published posthumously in 1987. The plot of the novel The Stone Angel The Stone Angel, published in 1964, is set in the fictitious town of Manawaka, Manitoba in the early 1960s. In The Stone Angel, there are two independent plots. In terms of the present time, it is the story of an old woman in her 90s whose physical breakdown has made her dependent and who realizes that her son and daughter-in-law are planning to send her to an old people's institution. Her pride rebels against such an identification with the helpless aged and one day she escapes from her Vancouver house to spend a couple of days in an abandoned fish cannery. Inevitably, she is recaptured and taken to a hospital which shall be her last home. It is the hospital that she realizes that all her life she has been a victim of her pride. She dies not long after this realization. 
within the primary plot which lasts only a few days set in the 1960s goes another plot in which the old lady Hagar Shipley recollects her long life in a series of flashbacks. There is one crucial period of two years that, in contrast to the other vividly remembered periods, goes virtually undescribed. This is the two years when old Jason Curie, Hagar's father, decided to spend his money on educating Hagar in an academy in Toronto. The effect of these two untold years is evident throughout the novel. In her long inner monologue, Hagar expresses herself in a way quite different from her Manawaka contemporaries and quite unlike Marvin, her son and Doris, his wife, the people to whom in old age her circle has slowly narrowed down. It was her educated mind within her gross and worn out body which acted the way Hagar behaved with the people surrounding her so. So the plot of the stone angel keeps something hidden and open to the conjectures. The primary themes of the novel Pride the most prevailing theme of the Stone Angel is that of pride. As John Moss states, I quote, What gives Margaret Lawrence's vision the resonant dimensions of universal truth is the interfacing of the destructive and constructive effects of Haggard's recalcitrant pride. Pride is a double-edged sword." Unquote. Indeed, Haggard's great pride helps her to cope with the many difficulties she faces throughout her life. This pride, however, also separates and detaches her from other, resulting in several strained relationships with which she was unable to mend. Hagar's pride repeatedly imprisoned her within the confines of thwarted affections and misdirected emotion. More specifically, her pride caused such things as an unhappy marriage with Brampton Shipley and a severance of all ties with her father, Jason, and her brother, Matt. Her pride served her best in her dying days, when she was determined not to submit to frailty and raged against the fading light with the same stubbornness that she had always displayed. Themes of the novel Time In The Stone Angel, time is the most important factor in determining the structure of the novel. The assertion of temporal dominance occurs a number of times in the novel. Hagar, leaving Bram and at the same time leaving her hometown, comments on her departure. I quote, Then we were away from Manawaka. It came as a shock to me. How small the town was and how short a time it took to us to leave it as we measured time. Unquote. It is through her sense of time that Hagar measures the space of Manawaka and then coming to Vancouver she voices a sentiment you begin again and nothing will go wrong this time for it is time not place that manifests itself in change arising from a change of mind or heart rather than a change of place and time is mind's dimension. The novel, Sown Angel, consists of alternating passages from a past and a present, both of which exist within Haggard's mind. She is either remembering or perceiving the world around her with an old woman's suspicious eyes which give her observations, their special twist and color. 
It appears or it opens with Haggard's recalling the stone angel in her rich and racy inner prose. The prose of thoughts readers are expected to believe are addressed to them. And then Hagger describes the cemetery and suddenly switches to the present. From this beginning until about the last quarter of the book, the stone angel maintains parallel chronological patterns, the present following sequentially the last days of Hagger's life, and the flashbacks following also sequentially the courses of her life as it appears in the novel. In terms of action, this is a book of narrow compass, the narrative of an old woman's thoughts and memoirs on the eye of death. The Stone Angel by Margaret Lawrence is a major event in the history of Canadian fiction. The primary events reflected in the novel narrates about the story of an old woman surviving in the Canadian soil. The imaginary city of Manawaka as we encounter in Lawrence's artistic productions are definitely part of her days spent in Manitoba. It is very interesting to note that Lawrence is probably one of those people who have actually lived in Canada, actually born in Canada, who had actually moved out of Canada, then at a point of time came back to Canada and then finally left Canada and continued with her literary career. Margaret's this particular novel, that is The Stone Angel, the wider thematics itself actually unveils the name of this particular novel, that is The Stone Angel. Themes of the novel, survival. In 10 years sentences, Margaret Lawrence has stated, I quote, with the stone angel, without my recognizing it at the time, the theme had changed to that of survival. The attempt of the personality to survive with some dignity. Totting the load of excess mental baggage that everyone carries until the moment of death." Unquote. Three years after Lawrence wrote this essay, Margaret Atwood's survival appeared in 1972. Though Atwood has made only three brief references to the Stone Angel in her book, Lawrence considers her novel a story of liberation and frustrated attempts at liberation in a generational context. Haggard's long life is an often failing effort to find and be herself, and in that sense to archive liberation. Themes of the novel Freedom. Freedom is linked to survival and also linked to the theme of hostility between settlers and hunters that has dominated the entire history of North America. The contrast between Bram Shipley and Jason Curie which appealed to Hagar is that between the rigidities of invading mercantilism represented by her father, a strict Presbyterian self-made man and the vanishing liberties of the frontier represented by Bram. In Bram, she sees all those qualities which are different from her father and it is those very qualities which she begins to detest when she goes to live with him. Again, the pride factor corners or comebacks cut. Again, the pride factor comes in the way of liberation cut. Again, the pride factor comes in the way of liberty and freedom. It is this pride which leads to her isolation and eventual destruction of all her personal relationships. Significance of the title In the novel, The Stone Angel, the Stone Angel is a symbol, an object which has a special role. It symbolizes Jason Curie's pride when he sets it up, nominally as a monument to his dead wife, 
but really to proclaim his dynasty as he fancied. It is the dynasty which is a bitter ironic twist of fate expires with him. But the statue also symbolizes Hagar's blind refusal to recognize her own nature and the consequences of her pride. I quote, she was doubly blind, not only stone but unendowed with even a pretense of sight. However, carved her head left the eyeballs blank, unquote. Finally, the statue symbolizes the way in which Hagar shares the obstinate, arrogant disposition of Jason Curie and even his attitudes to life. As we have seen that the wider thematics of this novel is our primary concern. As students of literature, we need to understand that the wider thematics of a particular artistic production definitely depends on the immediate historicism and the genre that adopts that particular theme. In this particular case, the narrative that we encounter within the structure or within the plot of this particular book, The Stone Angel, the theme that comes again and again is that of pride. Hence, the very title of this particular work, The Stone Angel, somehow is closely aligned with the sense of the pride. A monument erected to commemorate the journey of one wives actually transforms into the personal pride of a person who was erecting it. To go further and analyze the central character of this particular work, we will see how pride plays an important role in framing the character. Central character of the novel. Margaret Lawrence herself wrote, I quote, I wrote about Hagar as one individual old woman who certainly came out of my own background. But I was astonished when a number of other Canadians wrote to me or said to me that this was their grandmother. And I didn't know that it was going to turn out to be everybody's grandmother. Unquote. Readers identified Hagar Shipley as the type of the arrogant old woman fighting against age and death. Hagar Shipley is sustained by her pride and she is made monstrous by her pride. She is 90 years old when her voice is heard for the first time and she bitterly describes herself as a grossly fat, ugly and clumsy. Her body has grown as grotesque as her unforgiving spirit. She is by turns agonizingly bitter, snarling and sarcastic or weak, vulnerable and weeping. Her son Marvin and daughter-in-law Doris, themselves in their 60s, have to bear with her hour by hour and day by day. They have to bear her stubborn, intractable temper and her massive, unmanageable body. She is humiliated hourly and daily by being so vulnerable and yet she is impeccably unyielding to them in their honest efforts. She is unhappy for her age, her weakness and for the failures in her life. Yet, in the unbending pride of her spirit, there lies an enormous strength. She journeys through memory to recall her life, face its failures and admit her betrayals. And she makes one last desperate bead for escape from the chains of illness and age. She comes to her final hospital bed, but she also comes to her moment of truth and liberation. Readers are never allowed to look directly into the minds of Jason Curie or Bram Shipley in The Stone Angel. They are seen only through Hagar's eyes, heard through her ears, 
readers know about them what Haggard chooses to let them know. She often describes their appearances and eccentricities and sheds some light on their special ways of speaking. Haggard does not turn either her father or her husband into mere puppets in her memory or her imagination. Yet she always shows them as her foils. The others by whom in her great egotism she defines herself. She never has an unreservedly good word to say about any of them. To her never truly converse. She never has an unreservedly good word to say about any of them in her vision of life. Everybody else is a minor figure. Consequently, the novel has no real dialogue. The characters never truly converse. The exchange statements that are embedded in the great sprawling continuum of Haggard's memory and their encounters are stylized in recollection. Everything readers knew about them is secondary, filtered through the principal character's thoughts. Haggard's prejudices and her resentments stand out for all to see and readers are on guard all the time for the bias that sooner or later emerges in all her statements. Her fear and suspicion on the world color her relationships with everyone. Whatever she says is based on her memory and people like Hagar remember the distant past with great vividness. But are the memories of old people however vivid the real past? To all works of fiction that are based on remembering the past, the readers must regard memory itself as the first creator of fiction. The literary significance of the stone angel. The stone angel is important for it came as a critical stage in the development of Canadian fiction, which was moving forward from its formative stages. It was moving away from the stylistic clumsiness of writers like Frederick Philip Grove, who sought to see priory life in terms of an outdated European naturalism, and from the didactic earnestness of writers like Hugh MacLennan, who in novels like The Two Solitudes had given lessons in the rise of a Canadian national consciousness. Published in 1964, The Stone Angel is a study of the enclosed garrison culture of North American settlements and of the religion that supported and often distorted the spirit of their people. W. H. New remarked that Margaret Lawrence explored the essential differences between middle class expectations and other values articulated a female perspective and offered evidence to many young writers to affirm the simple fact that being alive was a political act. Lawrence came at a time when MacLennan's didactism had served its purpose and myths were needed to sustain the Canadian imagination. In creating her fictional town of Manawaka, Margaret Lawrence offered a powerful myth of Canada in the imagination of artists and responsive readers. Her role as a woman novelist at that time was also crucial. She built on the pioneering achievements of earlier writers like Sarah Janet Duncan and Ethel Wilson to shift the literary point of view from a dominatingly male one to the activity and significance of women in Canada. As we have already discussed that Margaret Lawrence's The Stone Angel has remained and will remain a major intervention as far as cultural productions by Canadians are concerned. As we have also discussed the wider thematics of this particular novel, 
it shows the struggles of an old woman within the geopolitical identity called Canada. Without using historical name of that particular place, the process of naming the particular space as Manawaka also shows or also reflects Lawrence's idea of dealing with time and space. Whatever we see, whatever we understand about the characters revolving around the central characters are seen through or heard through the vivid descriptions of the central character. The stone angel, the name itself talks about the essence of the existence of the central character who says that she became a stone without not even a single drop of years flowing through her years eyes after the death of her son. This particular novel will remain a major literary influence for many writers to come in Canada, especially those authors, women authors who feel or who might consider Margaret as one of those predecessors who paved a way or showed the future generation to explore the female sensibilities within an male-dominated alien world of Canada. Awards and Recognition The Stone Angel is one of the selected books in the 2002 edition of Canada Reads. The novel has also been adapted into a movie called The Stone Angel by Caris Cochlan in 2007. Ellen Bernstein as Hagar Shipley had won the Genie Award for Best Performance by an Actress in a Leading Role in 2008. What is Canadian literature has always been a major area of concern for any student of literature. Why Canada is also associated with this question. If we all are aware about the history of Canada, then one really needs to understand that the Stone Angel by Margaret Lawrence will remain a major intervention because it deals with the existence in this particular land called Canada. Unlike other interventions literary or other cultural interventions by other immigrants which continuously talk about the homeland or the land in which they are adopting their new lives, this particular novel actually is situated along the strategy called survival in Canada. Atwood's idea of survival actually featured in the Canadian literary milieu after the publication of Margaret's novel. Survival has always remained an important theme in the Canadian cultural productions. As far as this particular book is concerned, apart from survival, the idea of survival is heightened and given a new meaning, keeping in mind its negotiation with the time and space. Thank you.